Hello makers, and welcome to Sheer Stitchery. I'm Katherine Harris, and if you're new here, I do sewing and DIY tutorials each week. So hit that subscribe button down below so that you can be notified of any new uploads that I have. This week marks the reveal for the Sew My Style 2020 Challenge. So if you don't know what that is, it was started back in 2017 by Alex Bartholomew to help raise awareness to the slow fashion industry and to get young sewists or new sewists involved in sewing. So this year, they have a challenge where each month they release two patterns that you can choose to sew and hack in any way that you want. And then they do a random draw and you get different prizes. Now, one of the stipulations for criteria this year was ensuring that the patterns involve not only female, but also male and non-binary patterns that are suitable for any body type and sewist. As well, they had to go above a size 22 so that we could also include some of the plus size sewists, which I think is absolutely fabulous. So January, they released two patterns. One was the Courtney bodysuit by Rad Patterns, and the other was the Tanya culottes by Megan Nielsen. So after I saw the culottes, I thought, how cute is that? I've never made culottes before, but they look like a circle skirt, and in a midi length, had that retro feel, which is all about my style, and well, it's right in the hashtag, so my style. So I thought I would do the culottes in a midi length. And one of the things that I wanted to do was to ensure that I had some slow fashion and just really slow down my sewing and put that attention to detail in. So I wanted to have that handmade feel, which is why I decided to do some hand embroidery along the bottom hem of my culottes. I've got a quick tutorial on how I made them. So let's get to it. Pam 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 so you're going to grab piece seven and make sure you put a strip of fusible interfacing along the edge of that for added stability so your pockets don't gape open or stretch. So we're going to place that right sides together on our skirt front pieces. So I'm just pinning that in place. And then we're going to stitch along here with the 1.5 centimeter seam allowance. Next, we're going to understitch the pockets. And that looks just like this. So you've got it nice and close. It keeps the seam allowance tucked in nicely. Now we're going to add on the pocket facing and we're just going to pin that in place so that we can get this stitched. And we're just going to stitch there with the same seam allowance throughout the whole pattern. And so don't forget to backstitch at the beginning and the end. And this is what that is going to look like. So just make sure you've got that front piece folded over and then you're going to match up the sides and your facing will overlap just slightly. Give that a nice good press so it's nice and crisp. And you notice I did serge the edges here. Then we're just going to stitch the two ends. Now for the pleat. So we are going to match up the front pieces here and I am just pinning these in place along the front seam and then along the pleat that we've marked. So we're going to do the crotch seam and the pleat, and we're going to do the same thing on the back, which is piece number two. So this is what our pleat will look like after it has been stitched. And then I'm just going to put this towards either side and make sure that pleat is in the middle, and then we're going to stitch along here just to make sure it stays. Now for the right side seam. So we're only going to do this on the right side and we're going to place the front and back together and just pin down and it's a nice straight seam and just stitch that in place. And so that's like that. And then I just serge the edges and then you're going to want to serge the edges separately for the left side. Next is the waistband. So you're going to take piece three and four and on each of them, you'll have one that has fusible interfacing on it. 
and we're going to place those two together and the two without will become the facing. And so we have our markings on here. Just make sure you've got those matched up with the notches. And I'm just double checking here. And then we are going to stitch the side seam just on the one side of each of them. Next on the skirt waistband, or I guess culotte waistband, we're going to clip notches about one inches apart to give additional ease when we're fitting the waistband to it. So I've included this diagram that I drew because you've got the double notches on the back and the single notches on the front. I'm just a very visual person, so I like to have that. So next, uh, we're going to put the waistband on, which is the one with the fusible interfacing, and you're going to match up the notches on the back, the side seam, and on the front. And so the, mat the notches actually match up to the pleats that we had just formed. And now we're going to stitch that at 1.5 centimeters along the edge of the waistband here, and just making sure that everything lines up perfectly as we go. So this is what it's going to look like. We're going to take it over to our ironing board and we're going to give it a nice good press. And we want to press the seam allowances up towards the waistband. Next is installing the zip. So we want to ensure that the invisible zip is pressed so that it's open when we go to put our foot on. And then we need to mark our seam allowances, which is 1.5 inches down from the top of that waistband and 1.5 centimeters away from the edge of the fabric here. So the zipper teeth is slightly smaller than our seam allowance. So I, I'm marking this to make sure it's accurate. And this will also ensure that the zipper top at the top will stop exactly where our seam allowance meets along that edge. So I'm just pinning that in place. And if you want a tutorial on installing an invisible zipper, I've got a great one that I will link in the description down below and leave a card up ahead here. So we're just going to switch to our invisible zipper foot. And that's what that looks like. We're just going to place that in. And then we're going to place it in the left hand groove and making sure that the zipper teeth is like push out towards the left so that it gets nice and close to the zipper teeth. Don't forget to backstitch at the top and the bottom for added security. This is what that'll look like. I've got it zipped up and this is how I make sure that my seams on my waistband line up. I mark them and then I pin that on this side, on the other side, I'll pin those marks first, making sure that I've still got that 1.5 centimeters seam allowance out away from the edge. But then this ensures that as we zip it up, you're not going to have a seam that is slightly offset on the waistband, as opposed to measuring it from the top again. And just pinning that nicely, and then we're gonna take that to the machine and stitch that in. And then when we zip it up, it fits perfectly. And so next we are going to sew the bottom seam on the left side that matches up to the side seam here. So I am just getting as close as I can with my pin to the edge of where the zipper stitching ends. And I'm just pinning all the way down here and I'm putting my pins in vertically because we're gonna be switching the way we go. So we're gonna stitch down on one end, then we're gonna flip it over and we're gonna stitch back. So you'd leave about five centimeters from the top of that zipper and then you're just gonna stitch down with your 1.5 centimeters seam allowance. Then what we're going to do is we're going to switch from our regular presser foot to a regular zipper foot. So we're going to place that on and then we're gonna flip our fabric over and then the area that we had left that five centimeters on, that is where we are going to start. And the zipper foot allows us to get very close to the edge of that stitching. And so just make sure you pull the zipper teeth out of the way, pull out your pin. I like to double check to make sure my fabric is flat and everything's laying the way it needs to be. And then we go up to the top and just do a quick back stitch there because that is a point of stress where you're gonna be opening the zipper. So you wanna make sure it's nice and sturdy. So you can see that the seams line up perfectly and it's completely seamless, hence invisible zipper. The waistband facing. So you're just going to press that up 1.5 centimeters. And then we're going to grab the rest of our skirt and we're going to match up the facing band right sides together with our waistband. So just making sure that you pin at each of the pleats, which are where our notches are, the ends, as well as the side seams here. And then just make sure that you ensure that the bottom edge is still folded up 
because you're gonna stitch along the edge and then along the top, and then you're gonna go back down along the edge. And whoops, I have to fix that here to make sure that it stitches properly. So once that is all stitched in place, you're going to want to clip these curves so that it's easier to turn and you don't have a lot of excess fabric in there. So I'm just clipping each of the edges and then I'm going to go at one centimeter or one inch intervals and just clip close to the seam to create that additional ease when we turn out the waistband. And then I'm going to understitch as far as I can along the facing side. Next, we are going to attach that waistband. Now you can do it by machine, but you're going to have a visible top stitch. And I didn't want a visible top stitch showing on the waistband, so I am just doing this by hand using a ladder stitch. And then it's completely invisible, and I think it looks a lot more professional when done this way. Next is the inseam. So you're going to want to turn your culottes inside out, and then you're going to place the crotch seams, both the front and the back, together, right sides together. I like to start pinning right at that center seam of the crotch seam here, and just match those up. And a lot of times I like to do two pins on that, one on the right side of the seam and one on the left side of the seam to make sure that they don't move and my seams are always matched up. Next, just pin the rest of the inseam here, and then we're going to stitch that 1.5 centimeters. Next is the hem and my favorite, the finishing touches. So first you need to let your culottes hang for about 48 hours because when you cut things on the bias, it is going to stretch. Next, I'm adding some decorative stitches. So 1.5 inches from the bottom and 1.5 centimeters between the rows, I'm going to be marking three rows that I'm going to be doing some hand stitching on. And so then after that, just use your wrist to create a slight curve because it is not straight, it is like a circle skirt. And so once you have those rows done, I'm getting out my embroidery hoop and then I'm doing some very simple embroidery where I'm basically doing one star and then two dashes, then one star and two dashes. And this was actually a lot of fun to do. Next, I surged the bottom edge, which is not what was in the instructions, and then I folded it up once because I didn't want that excess bulk in the hem because this linen is very lightweight and I didn't want that to weigh it down. So that is what the hem looks like when it's all done. So I really enjoyed making these culottes and I think I'm going to make them again. They are going to be perfect for summer and paired with some nice leggings underneath. I can also wear them in winter. And Megan, I know you're in Australia and it's summer there, but it's winter here. So I can't wait to test these out in summer. That being said, I love the fact that they are shorts and that you can't tell that they are shorts until I do something kind of like this. That's pretty cool, huh? You can't do that in a skirt. So I hope you enjoyed this and I'd love to see some of your makes and what you decided to do for the challenge or if you've just heard of this challenge, what you think about it. Leave it in the comments down below. And if you enjoyed this video, please give it a big thumbs up. Until next time, makers, let's get our sewspiration on. Jump, jump.